to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The Lord placed very strongly in my heart to share with us for the time that we have available a very powerful concept and then I hope that as God grants grace we'll at least be able to speak over our lives in addition to that which the Lord has done very touched to hear the testimonies happening around the world already miracles are proof that God is in the midst of his people he says the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I'll be teaching on the kingdom just for a few minutes and then we we'll trust the Lord to pray Matthew chapter 6 please and verse 9 this was Jesus teaching at what we call the Beatitudes he was mentoring the disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb and he was teaching them on prayer Matthew chapter 6 we we'll read from verse 8 let's rush because of time it says do not be like them for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask and then verse 9 he says after this manner therefore pray he didn't say by this recitation follow this formula he was talking about a formula not necessarily the chanting of the same words verbatim although that is profitable but the idea is not just reciting what was written understand that there is a protocol to prayer he says approach prayer with this understanding our father which art in heaven then he says hallowed be your name verse 10 thy kingdom come in other words let the kingdom of god be the focal point of your prayer of your desire because many of the needs you would later ask are there only because the kingdom has not come are you getting the point now so he's teaching that in praying let me save you myriads of prayer requests by focusing on that which is central that your kingdom come because if your kingdom truly comes there are many other requests that you may not need to ask are we together now thy kingdom come and then he tells you how the kingdom should come by thy will being done the kingdom of god comes everywhere his will is done and he says let it be done in earth not on earth in earth the first earth being you not just the territory let it be done in earth this earthen vessel let your kingdom come in this earth and then across every territory daniel chapter 7 and verse 27 daniel chapter 7 and verse 27 and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven the bible says shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him this is a verdict that a time will come creation will be compelled to see the reality of the life the power and the kingdom of god one more scripture first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 the apostle is teaching us and he says you are a chosen generation say amen. amen he calls us a royal priesthood and holy nation 
a peculiar people, he says, mandated to show forth the praises of him, is the word doxazo, the displaying of the excellency and the glory of a man, a king. He says that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So he calls us a chosen generation. He calls us a royal priesthood mandated to show the dominion, the power, the excellence of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is very important. Now, the gospel is broadly, theologically speaking, broken into seven facets. And one of it is called the gospel of salvation. When you teach the gospel of salvation, in that gospel, the father is the giver. The, ex, the, 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 the giver of love to a depraved creation. Jesus Christ is the mediator and the savior. Man is the recipient of that that act of kindness so the the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus the son to man first and then the entire creation are we together now to the end that whoever believes that message receives the life of god this is the gospel of salvation but there is the gospel of the kingdom when you come to the gospel of the kingdom jesus is no longer savior Jesus is king. Man is no longer a weak and beggarly person. Man is an ambassador, a witness. Are we together now? The gospel of salvation, man is a helpless personality awaiting the act of benevolence from a God who is unlimited. But the gospel of the kingdom is a gospel that reflects the glory and the power of God. It is man's gift back to God as a show of gratitude for all that he had done so we are witnesses we are ambassadors we are communicators of the power the grace that resides in this kingdom what is the kingdom the kingdom refers to the fullness of the life the culture the power the reality that resides in god when you talk about kingdom, you refer to a culture, a life, a dimension of reality that is contained in God, God's own possibility. Now, you would find the word kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God interchangeably in the Bible. Let me just... Um, bring some light there and then we'll, we'll, we'll just continue very quickly the kingdom of god generally talks about every sphere of um every every span where the influence of god can find expression that includes heaven that includes the earth that includes hell that includes the lake of fire everywhere the kingdom of god can ext- the influence of the father can extend to is called the kingdom of god There is no record in scripture that Satan created hell. There is no record in scripture that Satan created the lake of fire. It is God's kingdom. He says, where can I hide from your presence, he said. So everywhere the influence of God can reach is called the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of God where men have allowed his influence, his governing influence to find expression experientially. That is the kingdom of heaven. Are we together? Yes. So when the Bible says the kingdom of heaven has come, it means the culture, the life of heaven has found expression within a territory. It is God's design that his influence finds expression across every heart and across every strata of human activities. That is the only way that he becomes king of kings and lord of lords in experience. Are we still together? So when the Bible says, thy kingdom come, it means your governing influence, your culture, your way of life. Let it come first in my life, and then across every territory, every strata of human activities. Write this down, please. I wrote something down here. The primary tool for kingdom come, 
the primary tool for what we have come to know in the body of Christ as kingdom advance, the primary tool allocated for the expression of the kingdom is called dominion through influence. Write it down, please. Dominion through influence. This is the only way the governing influence of the Father and of Jesus will permeate the hearts of men and extend to every strata of human activities. If we are talking about manifesting the kingdom in experience, then that will only happen by dominion that comes through influence. Write that word influence down. It's a very, very powerful and important word. Because you see, in Africa, the context, respectfully speaking, the context of Christianity that we received in Africa, and then, you know, even for a very long time in this nation, was the evangelical dimension of Christianity. And the focus is establishing the lordship of the Christ in the hearts of men. But we neglected the territory. Are we together? So you find out that Christ is enthroned in the heart of men, but the territory is hostile to the purposes of God. And the kingdom of God cannot come with God just being Lord in the hearts of men alone. He has to be Lord over the cosmos, the system. So you can have individuals who are born again, well-meaning, but there is a system that would not bow to the name of the Lord. And our assignment is to embrace the kingdom in our own lives and compel our system to also call upon the name of the Lord. If you're with me, say amen. amen. We have failed woefully in our assignment as believers. If all we end up doing is just getting people saved and born again alone, that is priority, but that's not the only assignment. It says, go ye into all the world. It did not say go ye around, into, enter a system and influence that system. Are we together now? Hmm. What is influence? Write this down. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset and the convictions of a person and a territory is called influence the capacity to have an effect on the mindset and the convictions of a person your life will always revolve around the direction of your convictions and whoever controls your convictions controls your life are we together now everything that happens in society today is a report card reflecting how much the convictions of people have come under the influence of a few people, globally speaking. Our sociological sphere is being influenced by only a handful of people. The earth has over probably now up to 8 billion people or thereabout. And you can imagine that of all those people, less than 1% of the entire human race is influencing the mindset, influencing the conviction of people, families, communities, territories. And if those influencers do not call upon the name of the Lord, that territory is in trouble. It has nothing to do with your personal conviction. If the territory does not call upon the name of the Lord, you will still pay for it. Are we together? For instance, when you say respectfully speaking that Africa is suffering different levels of corruption, you may not be corrupt as an individual, but because you are immersed in a territory that carries that anthem, you have to pay the price for it. So it's not enough for Christ to be enthroned in the hearts of men. We must, we must sustain the formula that extends his influence to our territory. And I pray in the name of Jesus that in our lifetime we'll see our nation and we'll see this continent call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Are we blessed? Yes. Say influence. Amen. Mark chapter 1, please. We'll start our reading from verse 21. It's a long reading. Let's see where we can get to. Mark chapter 1. The Bible says, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. Uh-huh. And they were astonished at his doctrine, the Bible says, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there were in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, 
Let us alone, he said. What have we to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? This is Jesus preaching around now. Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him and said, Hold your peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Be patient. And the Bible says they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even unclean spirits and they do obey him. Verse 28. And immediately, immediately, not later, immediately what happened his fame spread abroad throughout the region round about galilee look at this immediately 29 the bible says and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simeon and andrew and james and john uh-huh but simon's wife lay sick of fever and anon they tell him of her I love Jesus. And he came and took her by the hand. No waste of time, no long story, no explanation, straight to the point. The revelation of the glory of God. And lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto him. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him. Notice he did not go to look for them. They had heard about the exploits of the father wrought through the son. And the Bible says they brought unto him all that were diseased, all them that were possessed with devils, and all the city. Everybody say all the city. I don't know your definition of influence, but this looks to me like influence. All the city was gathered at the door, not at the stadium, at the door. They were willing to go through that level of convenience. Inconvenience, I meant to say, to gather at the door because there was someone who was a revelator of the reality of the power, the grace, the culture of the kingdom. Next verse. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place to pray. He left them to go and pray. But because of the power of his influence, verse 36, the people would not let him be. And Simon and they that were with him followed him. May this be your testimony, verse 37. And when they found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. This is influence. Not your tribesmen, not educated men, not your age range, not your age group. All men. There is a dimension of spiritual reality that when you carry, all men will seek for you. They will inconvenience themselves and go through whatever kind of hurdle they have to cross because they have discerned that the kingdom has come upon your life. Adonai you're the lamb of god you are worthy worthy of my praise king of kings lord of lords let your kingdom reign in my life adonai it's a powerful prayer Adonai Let your kingdom come Is the prayer of a generation crying for his glory Let your kingdom come Yeah Let your kingdom reign Let your kingdom reign in my life, Adonai, you're the Lamb of God. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Listen. 
the days of begging creation to listen to what we have to say is coming to an end there is a dimension of glory there is a dimension of power there is a revelation of the kingdom that is coming upon the body of christ in these days the prophet mike cannot speak it he said in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and every other hill and that the nations will flow to it they will say to one another come let us go to the mount of the lord to the house of jacob for he will teach us his ways my kingdom come influence is powerful that is the only way we can cause the mindset the thinking and the convictions of a territory to bow to the lordship of christ let me ask you a question imagine for instance that michael jackson before he died said jesus is lord do you know even if it were a mistake he will win more souls than many crusades at once because a man of influence said something do not do not undermine the power of influence the way we speak the way we dress the way we think our revelation of success our revelation of failure all of this have come as a result of a proposition that has been sold to us through the years Are we blessed? I came from a very, a very core evangelical background. And for many years, our focus was, you know, saving sinners. And that's very profitable. Please understand what I'm saying. But then we discovered that whilst individuals were getting saved, our territory was not safe. Because one person sitting in the corridor of power can manipulate a policy that seems to override the spiritual convictions of people. And I said, something is wrong with our theology. An intelligent God will not create this kind of system. And so I found out that in addition to evangelism, there was a dimension of influence that we had ignored. The sincere people who led us to Jesus Christ taught us that any, con any desire for influence was carnal. Any desire for influence was satanic. And so in our loyalty to the theology that we received, we ignored opportunities that will bring us to the lamb light for the sake of his majesty. Are we blessed? The opportunity that will help us to rise to dimensions where we'll be able to mentor nations and mentor kings and bring the counsel of God to nobles. We ignore those opportunities. But we thank God for the privilege that he's given us. Every territory has the mind control systems, the kings, the captains of industry, the men and women who sit in the position of authority. And let me tell you, whoever sits in that position influences the people. The spirit of the Antichrist, we see it exemplified or personified in the person of Jezebel. Jezebel is a, is a woman who captures the spirit of the Antichrist. And the character of Jezebel is that every time she shows up, she looks for government. She looks for the place of power to sit. Because it is easy to frustrate the prophets of God when you are sitting with the king are we together with everything with everything we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout forth your praise. I believe that in my lifetime, our generation will not disappoint God. I believe that we are that generation in the name of Jesus that will, will cause the counsel of God to be established first in the hearts of men, but the system will know that there are witnesses who walked upon this earth. Influence. 
Influence is not just a carnal search for fame. Listen, do not confuse what I'm teaching you. There are people who have an ambition that does not have kingdom come in it. What qualifies, what, what the difference between a vain ambition and a desire to represent Jesus is the motivation behind it. For the believer, your motivation is your kingdom come, your will be done. This is why I desire growth. Your kingdom come, your will be done. This is the anthem of the believer. That everything that motivates our life, the energy that drives us, the labor that we do in the spirit, sociologically speaking and otherwise, is motivated by this one principal motivation. That the Christ be revealed, that the Christ be glorified. That's it. Every other blessing that comes whilst we seek to establish that, we receive with thanksgiving. But that our primary motivation is not becoming a great man, becoming a great woman. That's, that's, that's too small. That's too small a motivation. Let me share with you what I call five pillars of influence. If you master this that I teach you, I stand by the authority of the living God. And I tell you, your life will never be small. You will rise to levels and dimensions in the spirit where God can do great things with you. Please look up before we write. Did you know that even the revelation of God to men is not just dependent on their secret place and their passion for him. It's dependent on the position of influence that they occupy. There are some things God cannot show you because you are not seated in a position of significance enough. Let me give you an instance. Joseph is there in the dungeon. Joseph, who is the interpreter of dreams, but he did not have the influence to do anything about it. So God had to make do with Pharaoh. To show him that famine was coming. The dream to Pharaoh did not come from the devil. It came from God. Because only Pharaoh had the influence. Let us not make God have to use the heathen. Because we have not risen to positions of authority. Let's not get to points where people who do not name the name of the Lord. Start having visions about the revival. Because they have the power to cause change. Thank God for our prayer and fasting. Thank God for our night vigils. But hear me. There is a higher call in the spirit to rise to positions of influence. Thy kingdom come. There are five pillars that I've seen from scripture and I've seen from the life of true kingdom ambassadors. Men and women dead and some alive today who have been mighty agents of kingdom come models for us to follow the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are you ready pillar number one very quickly growth and transformation the first pillar that is responsible for the revelation of influence or the revelation of the kingdom through influence is growth and transformation luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the bible says and jesus grew or increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men when men grow influence is close to them growth and transformation sustaining superior beliefs look at me you will never be able to do much with god no matter how well intentioned you are if you do not trust god to replace some of the faulty belief systems that have come from culture come from our past come from our failures regardless what your background has been i sympathize with you but if you want to do business with god you must subscribe to a superior belief system a superior belief system is not an educated belief system system is the belief system that is consistent with the ways of god there are many intellectual belief systems and they have their role to play but we are talking of the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 when you read it says to permit this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mental disposition that jesus had that made the holy spirit comfortable living in him 
Psalm 78, when you read from verse 41, the Bible says they limited the Holy One. They limited Him in the, in the wilderness. They turned back. They tempted God. They limited the Holy One. They said, can God make a table in the wilderness? We must trust God. Listen, superior living comes from superior belief systems. If your belief systems, the, 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 one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is not just to produce miracle signs and wonders. That's important. But the major assignment of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life is to culture him to a, a dimension where he begins to think like Christ. Growth and transformation. Pillar number two. Let's hurry up. The second pillar that governs influence is value and productivity. Please write it down. Value and productivity. Exodus chapter 31, when you read the first five verses, the Bible talks about Bezalel, talks about a man in whom the wisdom of God and in knowledge that he was uh, a man who was skilled in all manner of workmanship. You read to verse 5. Productivity and value unfortunately you do not hear this emphasized in church value and productivity proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 the bible says the gift of a man can make room for him he says and that it is able to bring him not before mere men before great men the gift of a man is like a lift it can take you from ground floor and take you right to the place of destiny that you ought to go remember our motivation it's not just self-aggrandizement, no. Our motivation is to be able to rise to the platforms that give us an opportunity to represent his purposes and influence the mindset, the convictions of individuals and of territories. Are we blessed? Value and productivity. First Kings chapter 7, please. 13 and 14. Years ago, when God showed me this scripture, it changed my life completely. It, it destroyed mediocrity from my life completely. First Kings chapter 7. It says, and King Solomon, this was the building of the temple. King Solomon sent and fetched out Hiram out of Tyre, the economic hub of the then world. The Bible gives us a little background about that young man, Hiram. He says he was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali. He says, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. The Bible records that he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass. The Bible says, and he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. When you serve kings, you will receive the reward of kings. Is God blessing us this morning? Hmm. Value and productivity. It is important that believers are not only faithful church goers, faithful church workers, we must trust God to rise to a level of value, productivity, and competence that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Is one of the pillars of influence. Show me a man that is valuable. Show me a man that is competent. Show me a man that is productive. I show you a man whom mediocrity will never be found around him. Are we blessed? Value and productivity. The third pillar. Hmm. Wisdom and excellence. The third pillar of influence is wisdom and excellence. Daniel chapter 5, please. We'll read from verse 12 to 15. Daniel chapter 5. From verse 12 to 15. This is Daniel. For as much as an excellent spirit, the Bible says, and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. We are reading to verse 15. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king spake unto Daniel, Are thou Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jerry? I have even heard of thee, influence, right to the palace, the report of Daniel got there. Do you know words are powerful? 
they can immortalize your presence. You can be in one location and yet the glad tidings of what God is doing in your life can spread all across the globe. When Daniel came, please keep that scripture, he was received because his good works, let's go back to verse 13, had gone ahead of him. Okay, verse 14 now. I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom. There is a kind of wisdom called excellent wisdom. It says, oh God, our God, how excellent. Not just how great, how excellent is your name. 15. And now the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. A wise man. When you read chapter 6 from verse 1, the first three verses, chapter 6 of Daniel, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. We're reading to verse 3. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was what? First that the princes might give accounts to them and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel, not another one, this Joshua Selman, this covenant, call your name, I, I, I'm calling my own name there, was preferred above the presidents. So someone can be higher than a president. Someone can be higher than the princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over, not the house, the whole realm. Influence that comes through wisdom and excellence. Are we blessed? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, Paul mentoring the church in Ephesus he was talking about the church, the ecclesia, that spiritual strategy that God invented by his wisdom to bring the kingdom to this side of his, of his, uh, of his, of his sphere, this, this, this side of, of earth, which is, which is a part of his kingdom. He invented a strategy and he called that strategy the church. The church is a strategy. Like you invent a vaccine to solve a problem. The church is a spiritual strategy. It's more than a people. It's more than a gathering. It's more than a location. It's more than just a collective group of believers. The church, the ecclesia, is a spiritual strategy. Please give us that scripture. Ephesians 3 and verse 10. To the intent. This is why the strategy was designed. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multi-sided wisdom of God. The manifold wisdom of God. Are we blessed? Yes. Wisdom and excellence. Do not downplay this. You will never be able to rise to a level of kingdom influence that can bring the reality of the power and the glory of God if you lack wisdom and if you do not sustain the spirit of excellence. The powerful thing about these pillars is that you don't have to be born with them. Through your alignment and through your hunger and through your press, taking advantage of the grace of God, you can step into these things. That means you can walk into something you were not born with. So there are no excuses. Say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I receive grace, I receive grace. for wisdom. An excellence. Next pillar, please. The fourth pillar that controls influence in this kingdom is wealth and abundance. Write it down and think about it while you are writing. Wealth and abundance. Let me show you two disturbing scriptures. Ecclesiastes. In fact, let's start with Proverbs 22. We'll read verse 2, then we'll rush to verse 7. I wonder why these scriptures are in the Bible. Look up, please. Ready? Let's read together. The rich and the poor meet together. Look at this. The Lord is the maker of them all. What kind of statement in the name of honesty is this? 
it would have just said human beings meet together god is creator but he now said the rich and the poor meet together he's trying to make a statement that the lord is the maker of them all god made them as men they separated themselves into those descriptions are you seeing it now don't forget our motivation again thy kingdom come thy will be done let's go to verse 7 proverbs 22 and verse 7 you see why it's a disturbing scripture when the bible talks about ruling it connects it to wealth read with me the first four words ready the first four words one two read one more time one more time leave whoever the rich rules over just the fact our concentration is that it is the rich that is ruling it doesn't matter who is under our concern is that it is the rich that is ruling over please keep that scripture there the rich ruleth over that's it that if you sustain the wealth of the kingdom it can give you a leverage to rise to a position of influence where you can exact dominion over individuals, over a system, over a territory. The rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Two more scriptures. Genesis chapter 42. We'll start from verse 1 and 2. Genesis 42. This is Jacob now. Genesis 42. 1 and 2. Please help us. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, everybody say corn in Egypt. There was corn. There is nothing wrong with corn. The only problem is the location. Just keep that scripture there. It is dangerous when only Egypt has corn because Egypt is not a place that honors God. However, there is, that is the only place that has corn. The Bible says when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt because of the sheer hunger of famine Jacob said to his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 he says behold I have heard that there is corn in Egypt now go down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die a prophet without corn will still die please listen to this the only thing that takes the saints to Egypt is hunger. Hunger has a, a power of invitation that you cannot resist. It will draw you from anywhere you are to where you will be destroyed. Was it not because they went to Egypt that they were saved for a while and then later became slaves? Hunger will always take the church to Egypt. I have seen that there is corn even though I do not like the location there is nothing I can do about it because if we do not go to that location although we are prophets we will die Ecclesiastes chapter 9 the fourth pillar of dominion and influence verse 13 Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13 this wisdom I have seen under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Uh huh. We're reading to verse 16. There was a little city, so it's talking about a city, and few men within it. The Bible says, And there came a great king against it and beside it, and built great bulwarks against it. Scene 2. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. Everybody say it. Poor wise man. One more time. The Bible says, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet, no man remembered that same, it doesn't talk of wisdom again. Wisdom has finished his assignment. Yet, no man remembered that same poor man. And then here was my conclusion, 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nigeria, Lagos, Covenant nation, Wafbeck, nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words. So, 
wealth becomes the tree that carries wisdom to serve it well the poor man's wisdom is despised can i tell you this i know that there are abuses here and there and people have made all kinds of things out of what we call prosperity but in the name of jesus reject poverty it's an advice reject it think of your children while you are rejecting it think of your loved ones while you are rejecting it i give you an advice by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic in these end times reject poverty it's an individual choice i said before you life and death I said before you blessing and cursing do not allow anyone flatter you into believing that with mediocrity and lack somehow you will still navigate your way to rise to influence it's a joke not in today's world these are the pillars of influence let's do a quick recap before we touch on the last one and then we round up that the first pillar is growth and transformation the second pillar is value and productivity. The third pillar is wisdom and excellence. The fourth pillar is wealth and abundance. The fifth pillar is the supernatural. The ministry of signs and wonders. A mysterious pillar that is able to lift the name of Jesus and the banner of his name and his praise across territories. Acts chapter 5 and verse 12 down to 16. Shiba Kasubariata. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all in one accord and in Solomon's porch. We're reading to verse 16. And the rest does not and of the rest does no man join himself to them but the people did what magnified them the word magnified here is not a wrong word it is the word that was buttressed in galatians 1 and verse 24 and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in and through a man's life the excellency of your results the display of the power of the kingdom when men begin to lift you, then you lift his own name. So it becomes higher than you. He says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men to myself. Back to that scripture, please. Acts chapter 5. We're reading now from verse 14. The Bible says, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. 15 in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of peter's passing show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest. i just sang jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 he says to stand in the way please give us that scripture as i just read this it just touched me how far from the standard of god today's church is that a man's shadow he was not in a crusade he was passing 
today blind eyes open and thank God we celebrate miracles but look the efforts that are dissipated we call upon God we clash cymbals we play keyboard we sing we jump we lay hands on our head I'm not against those things but I'm saying look the effort as though God does not want to show up there is something we are missing we need to return to the authentic place of provable power dimensions of the grace of God that dumbfounds principalities and powers you are a ministry here I challenge you in the name of Jesus thank God for the trickles of miracles that we see but in ancient times we will not even be qualified to be ushers not even in the welfare department find out the condition that you had to go through show us the ancient past would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest. i have seen miracles and signs and wonders in my life i say it with all humility but do you know every time i read scripture sometimes i just close my bible and tears will just come down from my eyes i say lord who deceived us like this apostle joshua selman a great man of miracles you read your bible and see that we do not come close to the least spiritual people in those days now this is not condemnation this is how you are challenged men can clap you into dimensions where you plateau in the spirit and stop rising and stop growing there must be a perpetual hunger and that hunger comes when you compare yourself with the reference of scripture not among yourselves for they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise the bible says the shadow of peter Mandi brando that you come and buy a soft drink just because your hand touched someone's shop as soon as you leave you brought heaven you come to visit someone you just sat down on their chair and say peace be unto this house suddenly storms 10 year old storms they hear your voice like a tornado in the realm of the spirit shalom be still church of the lord jesus wake up although we have seen the hand of god let's pat our backs only briefly there is a lot to do if we need to rise to a position where the church will not be silent it will not come by singing there is a dimension of the supernatural we need to reintroduce the foundation of the church in nigeria please take it higher for me my spirit is fired up now Jeez. the church in nigeria have you read about our fathers the men and the women who handed this gospel to us they were men who were not really educated but they were men who had fire these were men who met god and they knew they met him i was watching a video one day and i began to cry one of the old yoruba prophets i don't know how the holy ghost led me to that video and he was talking and the sheer glory and presence that emanated i didn't know what he was saying and honestly i didn't care you, you didn't need to be a Yoruba person to be blessed. The power that came from that man. I said, God, what has happened to us? Where did we miss it? This is my final session with you. This has been my obsession to tell the church, thank you for what you are doing, but let us wake up. If we think we are going to win the world at this pace, think again. There is a dimension of the power of God this is not for preachers this is not about ministry the effulgence of the life and the power and the glory of God ah. 
Hela sila kusi ata branda katia. That the Holy Ghost came upon meetings that refused to finish. The, they were supposed to be two hour meetings. Well intentioned. And someone just raised a song. And that song brought his majesty. And people, there was no preacher again. Ah, oh Lord, you are my God, Psalm 63 says. Early will I seek you. It says, my soul longs for you. My flesh thirsts for you. It longs for you as in a dry and a weary land where there is no water. Verse 2 is the reason. To see thy power and your glory in my life the same way I saw in the sanctuary. Let me tell you this. This is a generation that seeks for signs. These are not generations who will be loyal for nothing. The generation of our fathers that could be loyal to you whether they understand you or not. This generation is intelligent enough to say, if you claim that God heals, here is my sick son. I told God, do not send me if all you give me is a sermon. Do not send me if all you give me is a lecture. Do not send me if all I will go with is my brain. Do not send me if all I go with is a song. Let there be a token of your presence upon my life. Let there be a token of your presence upon my hand. Why will I preach and when I'm done, we just share the grace and the sick go back sick, the oppressed go back oppressed. Listen, if we do not rise to this level of the supernatural in the body of Christ, a time will come people will shout amen, but we know they don't believe what we are saying. And can I tell you this? The desperation of men is beginning to push them to look for solutions because men are not fools. If they don't find it with you and they discern God is not with you, they will respect you for who you are, but they will quietly go and look for where to get real solutions. Many testimonies we share in church today did not come from church. I'm sorry to say it, forgive me, we'll reconcile after the meeting, but it's true. Because when men become desperate, they can do anything. Don't toy with the desperation of men. I will not watch my son die. If I come to you and you cannot heal the person, that desperation of a mother will push people to go and get solution anywhere. And yet we continue to say Jesus is Lord. We continue to say, since I was young, now I am old. Out of a hundred people, if two people are healed, is that a good assessment? If there are 30 blind people and only two see, yes, we give God glory. But that's not all God can do. This is my obsession. This is why we refuse to get satisfied. The supernatural manifestation of God's power by which God demonstrates his ability to save, to heal, to deliver, to lift, to prosper his people. They are expressions of his love. They are also expressions of his might. Can I tell you this? Our world today is an arrogant world. The spirit that was on Nebuchadnezzar, Darius, the spirit that was on Herod, has now come and is sitting on the kings of the earth. You see the way they cheapen the church now, and they say it with all sense of pride. It's almost as if you are deserving of an award to the degree to which you downplay the church. It's not their fault. There is a dimension of the display of the power and the glory of God that can silence the mouth of all and sundry. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, surely this is the house of God, the gates of heaven. In the days of the generals, there were a few people who sat down and they were mocking, they were making mockery of, of um, Maria Woodward Eater. They laughed at her in her crusade and she looked at them and said, God judge you. The tongue of one of them protruded. They prayed and prayed, it didn't go down. He had to come himself and say, do you know what? I was stupid, now I know Jesus is Lord. She slapped the tongue and it went down. Now, when you have an example like that, that a popular madman on the street of Lagos 
a popular demonic suddenly he comes under the influence of this kingdom that we so boast about and his life comes under perfect order it is my prayer that we will not only watch miracles and signs and wonders in the life of those who have pressed a bit into God, but that there will be a hunger in us to say, Lord, I'm tired of an ordinary life. I'm tired of just praying and saying things I cannot defend. I'm tired of proposing dimensions about God. I do not sustain the grace requirement to defend. I write these things unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. I have a few minutes this is my final session we are going to pray and I want to pray for you it is my desire that something will come upon your life who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down and every ocean roars to the King of Kings. That's the God that we serve. Who is like Him? The Lion and the Lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean roars to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise Listen let there be a desperation in your heart as we pray for the next two minutes. Cry unto God. There is, there is a need, oh God, for my life to be part of the lives that you use to bring down the kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven. I'm tired of church as it is. I'm tired of religion. There is a hunger in my life. I contend for growth and transformation. I contend for value and productivity. I contend for wisdom and excellence. I contend for wealth and abundance. But in this season, oh God, and in this end time, I contend for the supernatural. Covenant Nation, Wafbeck, all following and all watching, lift your voice and let's pray. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Please pray. us back oh God to the days of our fathers in this country some of you even come from those physical families lift your voice and pray here at Wafbeck Lord we cry for a display of the kingdom the power the glory of God the effulgence of your spirit the anthem of Nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain Lord we pray that the graces and the mantles that were upon our fathers, the graces and the mantles that founded the church in Nigeria, we cry for a restoration of those ancient mantles. Spring up our wells for a time like this. Shela bakosa bradekata, 
Someone is praying. Pastors pray. It's time for fire on our altars again. Businessmen pray. A dimension of the wisdom and the excellence of the spirit. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, cross darkness the people. But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. It says, Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. We are a praying people. Lift your voice and pray. Something from heaven is about to come upon your life. I assure you by the Spirit of the Living God. We are still praying. Forget about who is at your left and right. It's time to receive. Wafbeck, a platform for receiving something that can change your life. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you'll do what you do this is a move we need a move this is a move Someone is praying, Lord, visit my ministry. Visit my life. What you showed me in my dreams and my visions. Here at Wafbeck, let it come alive, oh God. Find the flames of my destiny. Find the flames of my ministry. Hey, Palas Kabarata. You who are watching in your homes, watching in your offices, watching online, participate in the prayer. Open up your spirit from the U.S. to the U.K., from Asia to Africa. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let something come upon my life, oh God, that will set me on fire. Manifesting the supernatural, signs, wonders, tokens of his presence in my territory, in my community. Prophet. 
confess it to you your life must change your life must change your life must change your mind must change your mind must change your home must change Salapakarotasiata. For someone who is trusting God for healing, your health must change. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.